Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 24. So what we did in the last lesson was we took this guy here, this sprite sheet, and we figured out how we could cut one piece of this sprite sheet out. And so if you look back at the code here, we did that using this get method, which takes a coordinate as the first two parameters, and then a width and a height as the second two parameters. So this says, go to the coordinate x equals 16, y equals 8, and I want you to cut uh, the next 32 pixels from there uh, horizontally, and then 56 pixels down, and that will form a, a rectangle, and I want you to cut that out and store it in this P image here, temporary. Okay, so that was really the whole purpose of last lesson. Uh, it was, well, that's not the whole purpose. It was also to build this player class, but this should be somewhat familiar to you because we've been we've been working with classes now when we're building our ant class and this is pretty much the same thing it just has you know the members here a constructor a draw player we're even going to put an update player down here as well so they're all void uh, methods and we just have one constructor one constructor and just these these uh four variables up here okay uh, back here we just created the player uh, declared it then initialized it and then we call the draw player method all right, so nothing, nothing too special at the moment. But now we want to be able to cut the greenprofessor.png, cut this file up into 36 individual pieces so that when we move around, we can see the guy being animated. And we're going to run through this animation here when we're going right, this going down, left, and up. And then whenever our character is standing still and depending on the last direction that he was headed, then we'll display one of these characters. Okay, so everything from from here over is the motion. Here is the motionless. And when we create this structure to do this, we, we're going to want to use uh, something we, we we're kind of familiar with, but we're going to add a little bit onto it. And what that is is an array. So we are going to create an array for movement. Now. If I was just to store this information here, say I'm just going to go across here, I could make an array of 9p images. So I could do this. I could say movement, and then uh, I'll come down here, set it up in here. I could say movement is equal to new p image and 9. So this would store all of these. But I actually want to store everything on the sheet. So I need three more rows in addition to this first one. So to get three more rows out of this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a, another set of square brackets, and then I'm going to add another set here, and I'm going to put a four inside of it. So that says I have four rows and nine columns. So each row has nine, it has nine elements in it. So what it ends up looking like is something like this. So this is what our array should look like, or you should visualize the array like this. So if I said, go to the zero, zero element, it would be this guy here. If I said, go to the four, two element, you would go, or sorry, if you go to the three, four element, you would go right here. So three, third row, fourth element here, and you would pull this guy out. Okay, so this is it, it's just a grid. It's nothing too special, and that's really all two-dimensional arrays are, just a grid. Uh, they're very useful when, for when you want to do things like a, a tile-based game, when you're keeping track of things on the screen in a tile-based environment, or, or pretty much any 2D game, you're going to want a, a 2D array for some purpose. It could You could have multiple 2D arrays, each one storing different information about what's going on on the screen. Uh, you can also make 3D arrays. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, you could do three uh, for a, a 3D game or something like that. Usually when we start getting up to you know, three and 4D arrays, it's better just to create another class that's storing that information. Okay, but this works just fine for us for, for now, and it also gives you a chance to work with two-dimensional ar arrays. Okay, so how, how do I set these these up. How am I going to take all of these images out of here and put them into this 2D array? Well, let's just start by taking out one of the images. So let's get rid of this temp 
And since now we're not going to do that, we're just going to use movement to store all, all of our movements here. And let's just say movement, and let's take the, the first thing out again. So I'm going to say 0, 0, and that's still this ele element I'm cutting out. And so now I can replace it and access it by doing the exact same thing. So if I were to run this, I get the same guy up there. And I've just replaced that temporary variable with one space in my 2D array of 36 elements. So it's, it's the 0, 0 element in my 2D array. All right, so let's, let's try to load some more up here. Let's get this entire first row loaded. So we've learned already how to work with arrays when we, we want to put many, many things inside of them, and that's with for loops. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and put some stuff in the for loop in here. So let's do for int i is equal to 0, while i is less than 9, and i++. Plus plus. All right. Okay, so when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm taking everything off the first row. So that means this is going to stay a zero. But this should change because each time I go through the loop, I want to take a different element out. Okay, but right now, all I'm taking out is the same, I'm cutting the same piece. I'm going to cut the same piece out, and I'm doing it nine times. So all nine of these will end up being the same. So if you imagine going back here, and pretending this was being filled with what I was looking at, it would all be filled with this first guy. I would cut this one out, cut him out again, cut him out again, cut him out again. Because when you cut something out of the sprite sheet, you're not cutting it out permanently. You're more just copying it from the sprite sheet and putting it into the thing you want to use. And then you can either delete that thing, but it doesn't affect what's ever happened to the sprite sheet. The sprite sheet never changes. All right, so let's test that uh, by printing these out. So we're going to do this pretty much just the same loop down here. And okay. Now I'm going to put that there. Now I'm going to do something a little different here. Uh, actually, no, let's run it first and then I'll do something different. So if I'm not changing these values, remember this is the x and y location of where this, this movement uh, graphic is going to be printed. What do you think is going to happen when I run this? So it's going to set up the sprites, and it's going to fill them all. And then what's going to happen down here? So I have, I should have nine images, all of this guy here. But what's going to happen when I run it? Well, what's going to happen is because I am drawing always to zero zero, it's going to draw them all over each other. So I mean, on top of each other. So it's just going to look like this. Even though I'm really drawing nine things, I'm all I'm drawing them right on top of each other. So how can we fix that? Well, we can do the following. We know from the last lesson that all of our all of our images are 32 pixels wide by 56 pixels high. So if I say i times 32, when this loop goes the first time, this will be the coordinate is going to be zero comma zero. And when I go through the second time, I will be equal to 1. So it'll be 1 times 32. So it'll be 32, 0, and then 64, 0, and then it will be 96, 0, and so on. And it will go all the way up uh, in, until the end. And then we'll have printed them all off. Okay. So let's do that. And then let's print them all out side by side. So this should print all of them out, all nine of them, side by side. And there you go, all nine of our, our guys printed side by side. But as I said before, it's just that first image copied nine times. All right, so let's try to space it so we can see we can see that they're separate images. So I'm gonna make that 40 instead of 32. And there we go. So now you can see them all spaced out. All right, if I went ahead and changed this back to being just the professor, that's the one that has the, the alpha layer, the transparency, and I ran this, you would get all of them just like that. Okay, so I'll go back to the green for now so we can see. Okay, so how do I cut them out in order? Well, I want to do the same thing I did here, but I want to change the number slightly. If you remember, each of these graphics should be 64 pixels. So right now I'm going to here, I'm coming in 16 pixels. 
I actually want to go 16 pixels and I want to go from here 64 more pixels. So I want to cut from right here. So this would be 16 because I'm starting at 16 here. I want to add 64 more each time I make a cut. I'm not going to ever change this for the first row because I always want to cut along at the same y the same the same y value. And the cut is always going to be the same size because I want all the pictures to be the same size. So what I have to do here is I need to do 16 plus 64 times i. That means when i is 0, this equals 16. When i is 1, it equals 80, which is what we want. And then it will work throughout everything. So if I run this now, I will get, notice I have the still one, and then I have the animation coming through. So we've, we've saved all of the animation correctly. All right, so from this point, it's actually, it's really easy to go ahead and do the next one. So if I want to do the next row, I can just copy this line. But I'm no longer working on row 0, the first row. I'm working on, on the index 1, or the second row. This will stay the same, because I'm always moving across the x-axis in the same way. But I'm gone from here. Last time I was cutting 8 pixels down. And this time I want to cut down how many? Well, remember the graphic is 64 high, so I want to be 8 pixels plus 64, which gives me 72. So this will change to 72. When that changes to 72, then it will cut across here instead. It will come here, cut, 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 and it will go down like this. It's cutting, it's starting here, cutting it down to this corner, and so on. And we can just draw the next one. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. Now I can space them the same way. But remember, these are taller than, than uh, they are wide. So I want to instead, let's move this down 60 pixels. Okay, And there we go. So now we have the animation of the guy walking left. And that's going to be stored in our movement array at 1. So what I can do now is go ahead and do the next row just as easy. And actually, I, I can cut and I can put both of them in, in right now, no problem. And we just change this to be 2 and 3. And this becomes 72 plus, one, one, plus 64. So that gives us 136. And then this also becomes the same thing, plus 64, which gives us 200. These cuts stay exactly the same. And then I just draw the images. And we're just drawing these now just so we can see what they look like. We're going to take this out in, in the next lesson. And let's go ahead and make this 120 and 180 and run it. And there we go. There are all of our images. Notice we've cut them and we can display them separately. And that's pretty much it. So this has stored the information for, for each of our characters. And it didn't really take too much work. It's just a few lines of code in here. And we just use this git method a lot and cut everything out. And we only have to do, th to do that one time. That's when we create the object and the constructor runs. It calls this in the constructor and does that. OK, so now that we've done that, the next lesson we're going we're gonna to put this together. And I'm going to show you how to animate the character as you're walking around. All right, uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the YouTube comments or on my website. Thanks, bye.